de doctrine biblice, un curs de homiletică, iar în ultimele generații, cu precădere, a predat un curs de istoria și teologia misiunii și un curs de faptele apostolilor. De asemenea, suntem profund recunoscători pentru multele cărți pe care le-a adus la noi la școală. Fratele Rica a fost pentru o vreme îndelungată vicepreședintele școlii de misiune de aici, de la Constanța. A fost iubit și apreciat de staff, iubit și apreciat de studenții. Vom simți lipsa, suntem alături de dumneavoastră, vă prezentăm condoleanțele noastre, dar în același timp ne bucurăm că ne vom revedea în veșnicie. Ne rugăm ca Dumnezeu să vă mângâie inimile în această vreme. Fiți binecuvântați! Dear Jen, beloved Cunningham family, dear friends, Even though in these sad moments we are separated by the ocean, we want to you to know that we are with you in the spirit to honor the memory of a special man, Rick Cunningham, a brave athlete of Christ who has finished his race on this earth and has finished it well. For those of you who are attending to the funeral and are not very familiar with the almost 30 years of ministry in Romania, I want to mention that fact that Rick was one of the founding members of APME, the Pentecostal Foreign Mission Agency in Romania, one of the youngest and most dynamic missionary organization in the world. He served on APME's board of directors since it was founded in 2006 until 2022 when he returned to United States. He was the agency's international secretary of years, of many years, and also served for a while as area coordinator and mentor of the missionaries from Asia. Rick had a substantial contribution to the foundation of CRST, the Romanian Center for Cross-Cultural Studies in Agigia, Constanța, the school that prepares Romanian's career missionaries. He was one of the most appreciated and loved professors and also part of school's board of directors. But most of all, Rick was a man of God, a believer with an ardent passion for his mission, Missio Dei, a friend uh, and the role model of consecration to the world missions. He loved Romania and considered it his home for almost 30 years. He identified himself with the people of this country by learning its language and culture, and especially by loving God's church here. He served the church and its believers with selfish and dedication, not just the world missions, but also as a pastor, preacher of the world, and mentor for youth. From the beginning of his ministry, in Romania, he facilitated the development of a book found, and he was directly involved in the translating and publication of dozens of Christian books that are now being used in Bible schools and in training Christian leaders. We wish that even after his departure into eternity, his example will continue to inspire hundreds and thousands of young people in Romania to take the good news to the end of the earth. We are praying for you, his family, who are now feeling deeply the pain of separation. We are praying for his children, daughter-in-law, grandchildren, and especially for you, Jen, his faithful wife and ministry partner on the mission field. We will definitely miss this special brother and free friend, Rick Cunningham. But the pain of separation is eased by the hope that we have of seeing him again at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ when we will meet again with all our dearly departed. We are praying that this hope will comfort you, Jen, all of you from his family and all those close to him that are still on the earth. I bring this commemorative message on behalf of the many friends that Rick has made in Romania, but especially on behalf of the APME family, his colleague on the board of directors, the reference committee, the APME staff, and dozens of missionaries spread in over 25 countries in whose lives Rich has invested so much. We want to comfort you with a verse from 1 
Thessalonians 4.14, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Dear Sister Jen, honored Cunningham family, esteemed brothers and sisters, thank you for giving me the opportunity of sharing in the sorrow, but also in the joy of celebrating the life and ministry of Brother Rick Cunningham. I'm sending this video from Liberia, West Africa, where together with my husband, we are, uh, we are serving as long-term missionaries. However, since the fall of 2007, when I became the executive director of the Romanian Center of Cross-Cultural Studies, Brother Rick Cunningham has been, for me, not only the vice president of the school, not only one of the powerful teachers that ministered to our students, but also a man of God who inspired my faith and my vision, a missionary who appreciated my work and my calling, a co-worker who assisted me in many projects of developing the mission school, and a global leader who opened for the school and for me unique doors of ministry. I treasure the 15 years of close work with Brother Rick, and I want to highlight six reasons for which this work relationship has been special. First, he taught us that missionary service is a divine call and that if ministries in the homeland could be pursued without a call, foreign missions could not. The stakes are too high and it is that confirmation, that sense of calling more than anything else that gives missionary the staying power. Brother Rick has been part of interviewing the missionary candidates and through his experience, he had good questions to test their calling. Second reason, Brother Rick modeled that a missionary, it's not just someone who goes, but someone who is sent. He took personal responsibility to assist our students to enter new fields. If we could send missionaries to Indonesia, to Uzbekistan, to North Africa, or even to Macedonia, it was because Brother Rick was in the mission of God, following the pattern of Jesus who said, as the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. He always stressed the importance for the students and missionaries to be connected to their home churches and to not live on the field without being sent by a mission sending agency. A third reason, as the international secretary of our school, Brother Rick had a vision for impacting the world and made use of his network within the Assemblies of God World Missions to connect our school with the most strategic movements and lecturers. Brother Rick has been instrumental in developing the curriculum of CRST. He introduced us to people like Brother Basant Prakash from India, who became our lecturer on Hinduism, or to Dr. Alan Johnson from Thailand, who became the teacher on Buddhism. But especially, he connected us to Global Initiative, reaching Muslim people, and that's how the instrumental program we now call the Institute of Islamic Studies from Romania started even since 2001. The fourth reason, Brother Rick embraced his role with much responsibility. He was often repeating, Eu sunt un profesor, I am a teacher. And as a teacher, he loved to provide for his students the right books. Not only that his ministry in Romania included translating and publishing over 100 titles of mainly missiological literature, he also assisted us in developing the library and before he left Romania, he donated most of his precious books to CRST. The fifth reason, whenever he was on the campus, Brother Rick never missed devotionalul, the morning worship and intercession time, the weekly fasting days, and he was concerned to, concerned to see the students filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's why he was always embracing every opportunity of praying for them, 
and praying with them. A sixth reason, when teaching the class on the history and theology of missions, the students were learning that some persons, such as even David Livingstone, had great success as missionaries, but failed in the area of being husbands or fathers. Brother Rick modeled the importance of making family, marriage, your first mission field. He treasured his mother, but he loved Jen, and many times they came together to teach at the mission school. He was proud of his, his sons and daughters in law, but if he was missing something while in Romania, it was his granddaughters, Nepoata Lemela. While he related as a grandfather to the children of our students, he was dreaming to the beautiful side of his years of retirement, the opportunity of spending quality time with his grandchildren. And there can be so many other things to share. However, in closing my message, I want to invite you all to answer a question, a question that Ray Anderson, a mission theologian, is asking in his book. What ministry of Christ in the world would not take place if we did not exist? What ministry of Christ in the world would not take place if Brother Rick would have not obeyed the call of God to come to Romania at the beginning of the years 1990s? If the mission school and the mission sending agency would have never been established or developed? I concluded that God's global mission would have suffered would have been underrepresented represented if removing those last 200 Romanian students who were trained in our school, and of which many are missionaries in more than 25 different nations, doing great works around the globe, even starting mission schools and helping national churches start their missionary sending structures. As with the legacy of Brother Cameron Wilson, the legacy of Brother Rick Cunningham will continue. As the former director of the Romanian Center of Cross-Cultural Studies, I am forever grateful for the opportunity of serving together with Brother Rick and for the development the school experience while having him as our vice president. Brother Rick, has finished his race on this earth. I met him for the last time in the hospital, like exactly a year ago when he came to Romania, but his health deteriorated. But now I know he is in that cloud of witnesses, which soon will be joined by my own father. And from there, I feel that he continues to inspire me to fight the good fight, to keep the faith, and finish my race, finding myself in the mission of God. Condolences, dear sister Jen, and to the entire Cunningham family. I feel the pain of separation that you feel. And I pray that our God, who is the God of all comfort, will extend to you his heavenly comfort and will give you a constant hope in the joy of seeing Brother Rick again in glory. Amen.
Dragă familie Cunningham, dorim din toată inima ca Domnul să pună mângâierea Lui peste voi în această dimineață în mod special. Stimați frați și surori care am venit în această zi să fim alături de această familie, Our dear brothers and sisters who have come here to join us to support our, our friends, the Cunningham family. May God bless you for being here with us. Amen. Salutăm pe toți în numele Domnului Isus. We salute you all in the name of the, in the name of Jesus Christ. Pe frații din conducere de la Assembly of God, pe fratele Florinel Campiano. Uh, the brothers from the leadership from Assembly of God, Brother Campiano. Și pe toți frații ori de unde ați venit în această zi aici să fim alături de această familie. Departed areas to be here together with the family. Este o onoare, o cinste să avem această ocazie de a fi în această zi aici împreună cu această familie. For us, it's an honor to be here with the family, together, celebrating this moment. Fratele Eric a avut această dorință ca mormântarea dumnealui să aibă loc într-o biserică românească. Brother Rick's last wish was to have his funeral in a, in a Romanian church. Domnul să binecuvinteze familia aceasta și să le dea mângâierea lui. Amin. May God bless the Cunningham family. And may he give them comfort and peace. Amen. I'd like to invite you all to stand up. I'm going to read from the book of Psalms. Psalm 90, verse 1 la 12. Psalm 90, verse 1. Until 12. Începe și cuvântul lui Dumnezeu, omul lui Dumnezeu Moise, vorbește în felul următor. Doamne, Tu ai fost locul nostru de adăpost din neam în neam, înainte ca să se fi născut munții și înainte să se fi făcut pământul și lumea, din veșnicie în veșnicie, Tu ești Dumnezeu. Tu întorci pe oameni în țărână și zici, întoarceți-vă fii oamenilor, căci înaintea Ta, o mie de ani sunt ca ziua de ieri care a trecut, sunt ca o strajă din noapte. Îi mături ca un vis, dimineața sunt ca iarba care încolțește iarăși, înflorește dimineața și crește, iar seara este tăiată și se usucă. Noi suntem mistuiți de mânia ta și îngroziți de urgia ta. Tu pui înaintea ta nelegiurile noastre și scoți la lumina feței tale păcatele noastre cele ascunse. Toate zilele noastre pierde urgia ta. Vedem cum ni se duc anii ca un sunet. Anii vieții noastre se ridică la 70 de ani, iar pentru cei mai tari la 80 de ani. Și lucrul cu care se mândrește omul în timpul lor nu este decât trudă și durere, căci trece iute și noi zburăm. Dar cine ia seama la tăria mâniei tale și la urgia ta, așa cum se cuvine să se teamă de tine? Învață-ne să ne numărăm bine zilele ca să căpătăm o inimă înțeleaptă. Amin. Amen. Îl invit pe fratele Marian Vlad, păstorul asistent al Bisericii Grace, care va înălța o rugăciune. Amin. I'd like to invite brother Marian, the assistant pastor of Grace Church, to pray for the next prayer. Tatăl nostru care ești în ceruri, în mila și bunătatea ta, în ziua de astăzi pe care tu ai cunoscut-o din veșnicie, suntem aici ca să comemorăm viața fratelui Rick Cunningham. Tu ai cunoscut, Doamne, viața lui și eforturile lui. Noi, o parte dintre oamenii care l-am cunoscut, știm și cunoaștem efortul pe care l-a făcut în slujba ta, în viața astăzi. Doamne, îți mulțumim pentru toată lucrarea pe care ai făcut-o prin el. Lucrarea a fost a ta, Dumnezeule. Tu l-ai binecuvântat pe omul acesta și mâinile tale au fost peste mâinile lui. Acum, Doamne, când Tu l-ai chemat acasă, noi Te rugăm să binecuvântezi pe sora Jane și familia lui. Să binecuvântezi, Doamne, și să mângâi. Și cu speranța în inimă că Tu ne vei chema pe toți acasă, Doamne, și în ziua răsplătirii vom fi cu Tine. Te rugăm să ne binecuvântezi și să Te înduri de noi. 
Slujba de astăzi te rugăm să binecuvântezi. Robii tăi și roabele tale să le binecuvântezi tu. Și încă o dată, Doamne, ne smerim și ne umilim pentru mari oameni pe care ai avut pe pământ cu care tu ai lucrat. Unul dintre ei a fost fratele Eric. Te rugăm să binecuvântezi, Doamne, biserica ta în continuare. Amin. Și Duhul tău ce sfânt, Doamne, să lucreze prin oamenii tăi. Îți mulțumim în numele Domnului Isus. Amin. Vă invit să ne ocupăm locurile. Amin. Și o să cântăm o cântare împreună cu toții. O cântare care cred că se cântă și în limba engleză. Deci cei care vorbesc engleză o cântă în engleză, cei care vorbesc românește o cântăm în românește. Și Domnul să ne binecuvinteze. And we'd like to invite you all to join together and sing with us this song. Uh, many of you may know it, uh, Wayfaring Stranger in uh, English, but we'll be singing it in Romanian.
Reverend Richard Bruce Cunningham, Jr. died Tuesday, September 12, 2023, in Springfield, Missouri. Rick was born March the 27th, 1951, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He was the son of Reverend Dr. Richard B. and Alice Juanita Gosnell Cunningham. Rick graduated from Hillcrest High School in Jos, Nigeria in 1970. He received his BS degree in secondary education from Evangel University here in Springfield. That was in 1974. In 1990, he earned his Master of Arts in Cross-Cultural Communications in Missions from Wheaton Theological Seminary in Chicago, Illinois. While at Evangel, he met Jan, his wife, Janet Elaine Pugh, and they have been married for 49 years. Rick and Jan served as pastors in Kansas for five years. In 1983, they were appointed as Assemblies of God World Missionaries. They served first for 12 years in Spain, where Rick opened multiple extensions of the National Bible School. Many of his students still serve as pastors and as national church leaders. In 1995, their family moved to Romania where they lived for 27 years. During his ministry as a missionary, Rick was responsible for the translation of 140 theological and ministerial training books into Romanian. He was foundational in the growth of Peniel a nationwide youth movement which helped to send out Romania's first Pentecostal missionaries. Later is one of the founders of the Pentecostal Missions Sending Agency, APME, and vice president of a school of missions in Romania. He mentored more than 75 Romanian missionaries now serving in 27 countries around the world for which we praise God. Yes. Amen. Rick is survived by his wife, Jan, and three sons, Richie, with his wife, Maya, and daughter, Elise, Rebecca, Eliana, Chiara, second son, Bobby, with his wife, Janae, and children, Micah, Lily, Sila. AD, and Jonathan with his wife Stephanie and children Brantley, Mackenzie, and Braylon. He is also survived by one sister Cynthia with her husband Joel Shigo and his stepfather Dean Blackburn. Rick's passion was for training students for ministry around the world. The influence of his life and work spins, spreads around the globe. The family of his le legacy of his life as a missionary and began with his parents, missionaries to Togo, West Africa, and Jan's parents, missionaries to Brazil. Continued in Rick and Jan's work in Europe. His commitment to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ endures in the lives and works of his children and grandchildren, all his family, friends, and students will miss him dearly. I was asked by Jan to do a bit of reflection. Uh, it was in 1995 that, as many of you know, who are Romanian, 
the conditions of Bucharest, the conditions of your country at that time. It was a very dark and difficult place to live. And those of you that were born and grew up under communism, you learned to endure the conditions and the, its aftermath. Now, we came in, the Huffmans came in in 93. We came in in January of 95. And later that year, Jan and Rick came in. And for us coming from the outside, it was a very dark place, a very difficult place. And it was in this environment that we grew close together as friends and colleagues. At times it was challenging locating food items. It was very interesting at times to find the food items. And sometimes when we found it, we would co contact the others and say, hey, it, we found something over here. And we, life was hard. The Romanians here, you know what I'm talking about. It was a challenge for us, and we worked together to deal with the local government offices to get the permits and things we needed. It drew us into a very close time of fellowship. We shared meals together. We played games together to get our minds a little bit relaxed and we laughed and had good times with our children together. We needed to laugh. We had prayer times as we faced our challenges. We had incredible challenges with our children's health at time and health issues as adults as well. And we learned to draw on each other. We faced spiritual challenges that caused us to really learn to stand in solidarity in prayer and faith together. Our bonds grew deep until today we are closest of friends. I think of Proverbs 17 and 17. A friend loves at all times. Right. It's been difficult in the recent weeks and days be with Jan and, 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 and Rick and see what Rick went through. But today, Rick is free. Thank you, Jesus. He's free. So in closing, I'm reminded, as the doctor pronounced that at the time of the death of President Abraham Lincoln, the Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton, declared, there lies the most perfect ruler of men this world has ever seen. Now, he belongs to the ages. And so today, we remember and we honor our dear friend Rick and, and our colleague. One who had a consuming passion for the gospel. Yes. And now he belongs to the ages. On behalf of the Cunningham family, uh, we would like to say a very heartfelt thank you uh, to Jacob's Ladder for ministering to Rick and to the family and to this church 
Grace Romanian Fellowship for hosting uh, this ceremony today. There is no more fitting tribute to this man than to have been taken care of by the very people that he loved with every fiber of his being and then to celebrate his homecoming in a Romanian Pentecostal church that he so dearly loves. So on behalf of the family, we'd just like to say thank you for your love, your hospitality, and your ministry in this time. I'd like to read you a, a email that came through from the Assemblies of God World Fellowship. It says, Dear Jan Cunningham and family, on this day of Rick's going home to be with our Heavenly Father, we celebrate his life and thank you for his service to world missions and part of that being invested in the World Assemblies of God Fellowship. Rick invested his life in contributing to a pragmatic and functional model of mission sending agency in Romania. Because of his impact there, we asked him to be a part of the World Assemblies of God Fellowship Missions Commission. He has been a blessing through this, his commitment to see new senders raised up in Europe. It was a special time to have him present and share publicly on a round table at the first ever Senders Summit in Minnesota in May of this year, just a few months ago. He was thrilled to be a part of that historical event and shared the story and testimony of how the missionary vision was raised up in Romania and was making an impact and being an inspiration to other countries. I also recall his participation in our Best Practices Task Force, first in London in January of 2020, right before COVID-19, and again last year in June in Miami. His participation in our material has resulted in a book in print. It is making an impact among missions leaders all around the world. We are very grateful for Rick's participation as a faithful member of our World Commission. He was a blessing to us. We mourn your loss with you, but rejoice in the impact his life has made to so many. Sincerely, Brad Waltz, Chairman, World Assemblies of God Fellowship Missions Convention. At this time, we would like to introduce to you Brother Florian Kumpian, who also serves in leadership with APAME, the Romanian Pentecostal Union's mission sending organization that Rick works so, so closely with. Dear Jen, beloved Cunningham family, uh, we feel with you the loss of a giant. I have served with Rick for about 27 years in different capacities. Presently, I serve as the administrative bishop for the Romanian churches, Church of God churches. Also, I serve with him, with him as a board member of APME, we work together, president of Discovery Mission. He was a friend to me. I'm a big guy, but I always look up to Rick because he was always a giant in faith, in mission, in everything he did. I appreciate him very much. I love him. Actually, this week is very hard for me because I lost two friends. I'm coming from Phoenix where I did a funeral for a dear friend, and then from there I, I flew here to be with the family to say my goodbye to Rick, you now great man of God. You know, for you English-speaking people, um, I just want you to know that Romanians think that the Romanian language is the heavenly language. <laughs> and Rick kind of agreed because he learned it. When he was traveling in the United States, for instance, he didn't like to preach in English. He, he refused. I, I'm also a senior pastor of, of Philadelphia Church in Chicago. And every time he came in our church, he refused to speak in English. I said, please speak in English. And he was studying in English. And then he did all of his sermons in Romanian. He was um, a passionate man. Um, he spread a passion around. Now, I want to, to say something. I believe that Rick and a couple of other Americans... One of them was my mentor, Cameron Wilson, another Assemblies of God minister uh, who found a discovery mission. He came before Rick in Romania, worked with him. They had, a, I would say, the greatest impact in challenging the Romanian church 
to become a missionary force. You're calling the, Romania, the Romanian church the sleeping giant. And when they came to Romania, nobody had the idea of doing war mission. For us, mission was to go to the next village, to the next village, to our fellow uh, citizens, to our fellow people. And Rick and Cam and a number of these wonderful people came to Romania and said, hey, our role is to make the giant wake up. And I want to say today that I'm so grateful because mission is my passion. I do many things. I have many hats. But my, my real passion is the passion for the people of the world. Uh, Rick has done so much. He has such a great impact. And I could say that may, maybe of some of you don't know this, but the Romanian Pentecostal Church technically is the largest evangelical movement church in Europe. And it's becoming a great force, missionary force. We send missionaries all over the world. And through his work, through the school we developed in Romania, we mostly serve Muslim countries. Over 50% of our missionaries serve in Muslim countries, places where we, because I consider myself an American now, we Americans cannot go with an American passport. But poor Romanians, they are received everywhere. So... Everywhere you go in these countries that are closed, you find Romanian missionaries. And this man that's sitting here in a casket, his body is here, but he's in the presence of the Lord yes. with a huge crown. He was a blessing to me, to my family, to so many leaders in our generation. We always looked up to him and we enjoyed his fellowship. I hosted him in my house, in my church many times. We had so many projects together. He was never tired. He was sometimes sick. He had all kinds of problems. He kept going. He was like, I mean, like an energizer bun. He never stopped. He always went. He had the power from the Holy Spirit. I had a friend before I, I flew to Phoenix. I have a friend, my church there, it's a board member minister, and I told him, I, I think I'm going to stop for the funeral. And this man, it's in his late 40s now, he told me that when Rick came to Romania, he was a student. And um, he, he said, Rick came with such an anointing that even now when I think about his message, his sermons, I still feel that anointing over my life. That was Rick. So at the end... God will say to many of us, well done, good and, servant, good and faithful servant. I want you to know that God just told Rick, yes. excellent, 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 good and faithful servant. Because that's what Rick was. And we thank God for his legacy, for the impact. We pray for the family. May the Lord bless you and take this legacy forward. And God will bless you in everything you do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Florian. My name is Larry Henderson, and I've had the privilege of serving with Rick and Jan as a missionary in Europe and representing the Sims of God World Missions in the European continent. On behalf of Sherry Sabella, the area director who serves over Romania and Southeast Europe, our Europe leadership team, some of whom are here today and present, those who serve with you, Jan and Rick, and have served with you in Southeast Europe, all of your extended European AGWM family, of course, our Sons of God World Missions leadership. We are here today to express our love, our deep love for you, our prayers, and want you to know how much we honor who you are. Not just what you've done, but who you are. Greg Mundus is traveling today and unable to be with us, but he's asked that we share these words with you on his behalf. Greg wrote... I greet everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I especially greet Jan, her and Rick's children, Richie and Maya, Bobby and Janae, Jonathan, Stephanie, your 11 grandchildren, and our missionary colleagues and friends. 
Sandy and I wish we could be there to celebrate Rick's life and to comfort all of you. Circumstances have not allowed that, but I am so thankful for the opportunity to share this through our dear friend and colleague, Larry Henderson. I greet you with a word out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope is for you that it is firm, because you know that just as you have shared in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the comfort of the Holy Spirit will be with you, Jan, and your family. I believe that Scripture, in Scripture, and, and I was and am strong, a strong advocate for the work of the Holy Spirit to be with us. And so that is my prayer for you today. My friend Rick was, in my opinion, one of the most outstanding, hardest working missionaries that I have ever known in my 45 years of career and missions. His passion, purpose, and persona were absolutely inspiring to a generation, not only of missionaries, but more importantly, of Romanians and their families. I'm so moved by the legacy he left in his own family, which we are so thankful for, and also the movements in Europe. His reach extended well beyond that of his passion for young people, for missionaries, and for sending missionaries from Romania who have impacted the world. I praise God that Rick had a life worth living and left a legacy worth giving. Dear Cunningham family and extended family, in all of the trials Rick had to endure before he reached what we all long for and hope for someday to be in the presence of Jesus. I pray that the memory and the legacy, the heart and the passion that have been exemplified in our friend, our colleague, our missionary brother will extend the ramifications to our lives and beyond. My prayer for all of you today is that the Holy Spirit would, would bring beautiful reminders of his presence in your lives and beautiful reminders of what Rick has left as a path for us and for missionaries to move forward in commitment, following the Great Commission, loving Jesus so passionately, and loving the lost. May the Lord richly bless, encourage, strengthen, and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that is my prayer for you all. God bless. Greg and Sandy Mundus. Amen. 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 I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to visit with Rick and spend more time with him probably in the last year than, um, than I have even over the times we've known them on the field and engaged together in ministry. I'll never forget the day when Rick started telling me stories about the move of God among the youth in Romania. And specifically, one story led to another, and eventually, as he told me about his joy of how the Lord helped him to start the Peniel movement, and, and today, to still see that that camp happens. And the young people not only have been called and trained and sent out, but are still being called. He told me stories of Grady and of Wayne and of all of you that how the Lord would just miraculously provide and give you open doors and protect you. And as we look back and reflect on those stories that he told us, one of the greatest joys for me is that that fruit still remains. It's not just something that happened, but it's something that continues to happen. Friends, there's nothing greater in this life than to leave something that continues after you and I are gone. Not just a financial inheritance or a piece of property that is passed from one generation to the next. But I'm talking about a spiritual inheritance. I'm talking about something that's eternal, something that matters now, and it will make a difference for eternity. And no one modeled that greater than Rick. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, 
Paul ends this chapter by saying, what is our hope? What is our joy? What is the crown that we will receive in the presence of Jesus when he comes? I want to remind you, Jesus is coming back. And when he does, the dead in Christ will rise and we too will be gathered together. But the question remains that Paul asks, what's our hope? What's our joy? What's the crown that we will receive when Jesus comes? And then he answers that question as he's talking to the Thessalonians, the people that he loved, the people that he had led to Jesus, the people that he had pastored. And he said, it's you. It's you. You are our hope and our joy. In a few weeks, I'll be in Europe again, and I'll see many of the people face-to-face that Rick has ministered to, the leaders that he's worked with. And today, we imitate Rick's faith, his life. As Greg well said, may God help all of us to live a life worth living and to leave a legacy worth giving. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Just before the video plays... uh, I think most everyone came today to celebrate and rejoice and remember Rick Cunningham. This service doesn't have to be eternal to be effective, but don't get in a hurry. I want to ask you to stand with me. All of you that ever stood talking with Rick Cunningham or saw him preach... So in honor of Rick, come on, up on your toes. <laughs> One more time. What a wonderful, godly man. Just by a show of hands, how many of you heard Rick preach at least five times? And of all the times I heard him preach, and I preached a lot, I'm a preacher, I wish I could say I never preached a dud. My wife is here and she could tell different. I never heard Rick preach a dud. Always an anointed word. So please be seated, relax, and let's enjoy some more testimonials on the coming video. My name is George Gavrush. I'm a missionary from Romania. I met Rick Cunningham Back in 95, when he first moved to Romania, I was a Bible school student at the time. And um, in 96, uh, Rick joined uh, us in a youth ministry called Peniel. I have so many memories uh, serving uh, together with Rick uh, in youth camps and conferences. And I'll never forget those nights when Rick was praying for young people who gave their lives to Jesus. Uh, praying for salvation, praying for the uh, baptism of Holy Spirit, and uh, God really used Rick uh, in a mighty way. Uh, we were very young. I was 21 when I co-founded this ministry, and uh, give, uh, uh, Rick gave a lot of, uh, of, of gave us a lot of confidence and uh, self-confidence. He treated us uh, uh, with respect, and uh, he believed in us, and that. That was very meaningful for us. And uh, later on in 98, I, I went on to uh, the mission field, uh, being the first uh, missionary sent by our denomination. And uh, Rick was instrumental in uh, helping me raise support. I introduced the concept of uh, faith promises, which was a new thing. And I was shy to ask for support. Uh, and the, the churches were not used to send missionaries. We believed at that time that we were too poor to do it. And um, it was so encouraging to have Rick. And uh, for the 18 years I was involved in, uh, in Afghanistan, um, Rick was always cheering me on. I had the privilege of serving with him uh, uh, in the leadership of our sending agency for about two years. And, uh, even in the last five years, as I, I've been serving in uh, Niger in West Africa, I kept in touch with Rick, and he always was an encourager. He was a, a, a person who, who never shied away from putting the mouse, and he, he, he drove a lot, and he's been all over Romania and many other places in churches and camps and uh, 
Bible schools and um, uh, spoke good Romanian and um, really his, his impact uh, it's big and only only no, uh, God knows how big that impact is. Uh, he will be deeply missed. Jan, uh, Richie, Bobby, Jonathan, um, we, I, I send you my condolences and we, the, the, the bar that Rick raised is high and uh, I hope we all uh, cherish his role model and uh, he will be deeply missed. Thank you. We are so grateful for Brother Rick's involvement in the missionary community in Romania. He was such an inspiration for many of us. Personally, he impacted my life. I am now a missionary in Madagascar, and uh, together with the Assemblies of God of Madagascar, we want to start a mission school. I'm so blessed to work a little bit with Brother Rick Cunningham. We grieve together with you, and we want to send sincere condolences from myself and my wife. For me, Rick uh, was a mentor and as well a friend. Uh, he played an important role in, uh, to fulfill the call of God in uh, our lives. He was there for us in the day of our wedding and we will always remember his words uh, when he tell us, go and preach the gospel to all nations. We will miss him and we wait to meet with him in heaven. God bless you and uh, may God give you peace and uh, we send our condolences from here, from Albania. We are grateful for Brother Rick Cunningham's impact in our lives. He showed us by example to love the people we serve. One of the greatest lessons we learned from him was that the Holy Spirit empowers us to be witnesses for God to the nations of the world. Brother Rick, as we used to call him in Romania, he was my teacher, but only not only that, he was an inspiration for my life and for the life of many Romanians and for the, the church in Romania. His passion for the lost, his vision for us as Romanians has been always an encouragement and a blessing to me. He not only talked about what it means to go in a different culture, learn the language, love on those people, but he modeled that to us. He spoke Romanian well, he loved on us sincerely, and he spent his life um, sharing that with, um, with all of us. It has been an encouragement and we will pressure that forever. Janas, we are saying goodbye to Fratele Rick. I'm praying for you, for the family, that the Lord will comfort you but also looking forward to the time when we'll all be together and we will seek to the one that gave us life. We are Marius and Margareta Brodian. We serve the Lord in Uganda in West Nile among the lost. We send our sincere condolences to the Cunningham family at this sad time. Roderick was for us a worthy example to follow a humble man dedicated to Christ. Rick was a man who had a strong impact on those around him, who manifested in everything he did the love of Christ. Our dear Rick was for us a friend and a brother, was like a father. He encouraged us and guided us in our ministry, and that is why we love him so much. We have this great desire and trust that we will meet him in the kingdom of God and spend the eternity together glorifying the Lord. Goodbye to attorney Rick Cunningham. Rick meant a lot for me. He will be greatly missed because he left his mark on key moments in my life. He was my first theology teacher in Bistica in the 90s in the local church. He inspired me to full life ministry during Peniel camps while my youth age. He also was with me at the wedding time, preaching and enjoying that celebration. He was present when I was officially invested in pastoral ministry. So a lot of context in which he proved to be a good friend, spiritual father and mentor who inspired me a lot. 
That's why the words for me are too poor to express the appreciation for Rick and the gratitude to God for Rick and his family. Dear Jan, beloved Cunningham family, we remain with you in these difficult moments in prayer. May the Lord bless and comfort you. Și eu cred că Rick a fost un om trimis de Dumnezeu în România la vremea potrivită, atunci când biserica avea nevoie de un misionar de carieră care să ne îndrume și pe noi spre misiunea mondială. Iar Rick a făcut-o într-o manieră care ne-a cucerit. De aceea îl lăudăm pe Dumnezeu pentru ea. Our dear friend and co-worker Rick Cunningham was such a special man, completely committed to God and his mission with a big heart was known here in Romania not only for the Lord but also for his church and for nations. We were so much honored to have him as one of our five founders of the Romanian Pentecostal Mission Agency. Uh, a great teacher evangelist and also a mobilizer. Rick, uh, by his servant's life, made a huge difference for the Romanian church impact into the world. He influenced for good the lives of thousands and thousands of people. We miss Rick so much. Dear friends and fellow believers, today we gather to remember and honor a remarkable man of God, Rick Cunningham. Rick devoted over three decades of his life to serving as a missionary in Romania, and his impact on our church and the foreign mission agency is immeasurable. Rick's dedication and passion for spreading the gospel touched the lives of countless individuals, both here in Romania and beyond. His unwavering commitment to the mission of Christ has left an enduring legacy that will continue to inspire and guide us. As we say our final goodbyes to Rick, Let us also celebrate his homecoming into the arms of the Savior he served so faithfully. Though he is no longer with us, his work lives on, and we are called to carry the torch of the gospel forward in his memory. Let us strengthen the Foreign Mission Agency and continue the work that Rick was so passionate about, bringing hope and salvation to the world. May we be inspired by his example of faith, dedication and love for Christ. Rick. You will be dearly missed, but your legacy will shine brightly in our hearts and in the mission field. Rest in peace, dear friend and servant of God. Thank you and God bless you all. The news of Brother Rick's promotion to heaven gave me mixed feelings. First of all, it made me sad because I lost a friend. I have known Rick for about 28 years. He became a mentor and a friend to me. We traveled together, ministered together and talked a lot about almost everything. I already missed him. But I also felt joy when the saints are marching in through the gates of heaven, there is joy. And Rick is one of those saints who surely was well received in the presence of the Lord whom he served so well. Rick was a complete servant of God. He was a teacher, a preacher, a motivator and a mentor for so many people. His marks on the lives of the students he taught or on the lives of the thousands of youth he preached to at Peniel camps and conferences and on the lives of thousands of brothers and sisters who heard him preach in the churches he visited, only God can evaluate. What a joy to celebrate a life of a good servant. But not only I felt sadness mixed with joy, but I also felt challenged. Rick's legacy obliges me. He never said no to a ministry opportunity. He helped us start a Bible school in my city. He joined us in the board of Peniel National Youth Ministry. He taught on multiple Bible schools. He was instrumental in starting a mission school in Constanza and of Pentecostal Forum Mission Agency. He helped translate Christian books into Romanian language. And he ministered in so many churches. His passion for the Lord and for the people would transfigure him and consume him. He was the first man I've seen jumping up and down while preaching. What a passion, what a legacy, what a challenge. Who will take his place? Will you? Will I? The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are still few. Dear Jan and family, honorable friends and attenders, may God bless you and comfort you. Amen.
Since we'll be singing in, uh, in Romanian, um, I want to translate the first verse and the chorus of the song that the choir is going to be singing, um, since it is uh, talking about our hope and our, um, well, our hope for our eternal life and why it is why we're here, why we do what we do, why we serve God. Um, and the song begins, um, when our trials seem too hard, when the days seem too long and our burdens seem too great. Christ comforts us. He will show himself, reveal himself to take his bride upon the clouds and wipe our tears away. Um, and the chorus says, when we will see upon the clouds the face of Jesus, the hardships from here we will forget. His gaze will be our light. So warrior, be brave, do not despair. Amen.
it will be worth it all when we see life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ one glimpse one glimpse of his dear face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ it will be worth it all amen it will be worth it all amen Amen. Just before some of the family come to share, uh, Bishop Florin had uh, one other greeting from a letter. Please, Bishop. Jan and family, uh, I have to bring you greetings from a couple of people you know very well. First, I met in Phoenix uh, Pastor Moise Ardelan. He's the former uh, president of the Romanian church. He asked me to convey to you his prayers, his love, and condolences. Also, Emil Meštereaga wrote a letter in Romania. I'm not going to read it, but I, I will just say what he says in a few words. And for everybody else, I also want to reiterate that Rick, I believe he was the only American elected as pastor in a Romanian church. And he was a pastor at Vestia Buna Church, Good News Church in Bucharest. Emil Meșteriaga, the senior pastor, was a good friend. He was Rick's senior pastor. He sent a letter to convey the, feeling of the, the feelings of the church, the love they have for Rick and for your family. I, they are so blessed by your ministry there. So Emil, who was my roommate in, in seminary, he sends greetings the love of the family of, of the Good News Church, and they all love you, and they miss you, and they bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. At this time, if uh, Elise and Rebecca, and then Rick's sister, two granddaughters, and Rick's sister, Cynthia, would come, and after them, we'll hear from the sons. Yeah. Cynthia, Elise, and Rebecca. We'll let the boys come after they've they're very good you please come thanks Richie well I've listened to all these people express their great love for my brother I know I'm going to cry but I'm the only one who can tell you what a wonderful thing it was to have for him for a big brother. <laughs> and um, I loved him dearly. And there's a couple things I want to say today to his sons and their children and my, my, his nieces and their children who are in the room because several people have talked about his legacy and the legacy that we had in our families because we both grew up in missionary home. And I thought of three things that I wanted to share with you about that. This is specifically for you guys. The, the first is, I, I remembered them um, when I was about seven years old. I went into my first day of second grade. And the teacher said to me, hmm, you're nothing like your brother, are you? <laughs> it wasn't a compliment. <laughs> But there's some things in which I was very much like my brother. And that's because, um, like my brother, I came to know Jesus as a very young child. And I dedicated my entire life to serving him. My daddy once told me, he said, you're so fortunate. Those of you, the little ones, you can give your whole life to Jesus every minute of it. Don't waste any of it. So that's the first thing I want to tell you from my brother and from your great-grandpa, Richard, who you never met, any of you. And the, the second thing I wanted to say that I remembered Rick saying to me, something that we both agreed with passionately, 
He said, I believe it is the responsibility for every young Christian person to prayerfully consider if God wants to call them into full-time ministry and service for him. <laughs> um, and that's the second thing I wanted to tell you. There's a couple other things that we received as a legacy from my father and you received from your grandparents who were in Brazil. The first one was the the passion for teaching, the passion for reaching the little ones. And I'm, I'm challenging you all, all of you, to take up that passion, to be the next generation to fill his shoes. Um, the, the third one was, the second one was to, um, to the passion that he had for reaching the lost for serving Jesus with all his heart. I don't think any of us know anyone who served Jesus more all his heart and all of his energy than my brother Rick. He really did. And then the last one is, you know what? When he was a very young man, he stood back and he prayed and he thought, what is the life that I want to live? And then he did it. He lived the life that he wanted to live. That's my passion for all of you, is that you look to his example and you say, I can choose what it is, how it is I want to serve my whole life to serve the Lord. Choose it and do it starting today. And the last thing my brother said to me, I called on the phone. I was talking to Jan. She said, she said, hey, Rick, do you want to speak? It's your sister. And from his bed, he shouted. He said, you have always been a delight to me. <laughs> Jan and I laughed because that wasn't something that he would normally have said. <laughs> but that's my word for every, every little one here today. Every little one here every big grown-up man one here, you were always a delight to him, and he loved you with all his heart, and so do I. Okay, yeah, so, um, this is First Corinthians 15. Verse 35, and it says, But someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? What a foolish question. When you put a seed into the ground, don't you love Paul? It doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. And what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you're planting. Then God gives it the new body he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. Similarly, there are different kinds of flesh, one kind for humans, animals, birds, and for fish. There are also bodies in heaven and bodies on earth. The glory of the heavenly bodies is different from the glory of the earthly bodies. The sun has one kind of glory, while the moon and stars each have another kind. And even the stars differ from each other in their glory. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground, but when we die, they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they are raised in strength. Yeah. And then in 50, in verse 50, it says... What I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you this wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. In 54, it says, then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your victory? And yeah, and then <laughs> for sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be, like, sad or anything, but because, like, in Ecclesiastes 1, it also talks about there's a time for, like, mourning, but, like, we can put our trust in God's timing and we can have like hope in this timeline that he's created that ultimately ends in that stuff I just read. So yeah. Amen. Amen. A few days ago, I contacted my daughters and asked them if they wanted to contribute. We didn't pressure them, just gave them the opportunity and 
Elise at first said no. She said there's no way she could express herself. And then she wrote a poem and she expressed herself. And she was going to come up, but just a few minutes ago, she wasn't sure she'd get through it. And Honestly, I don't know if I'll get through it. <laughs> I've read it twice now, and I haven't made it yet, but I know if in this situation, my dad would try for me. <laughs> so I'm going to try. <laughs> you guys might be on call. from Elise Cunningham to her grandfather. I loved you more than you could ever know, more than sugar and Legos and Christmas and snow, more than presents and kisses and hugs and your cat. I loved you more than any of that. Do you remember those, all those times we sat side by side? and listen to each other, what we'd each confide. Did you remember those times you took my hand in yours and told me I'm proud before we went in to do chores? Do you remember those times you held us entrapped and enclosed in a bear hug and let us sit on your lap? You are my grandpa. I love you to the moon in a way. And I'll tell the young ones of your love each and every, every day. I'll remember those things, those moments we shared. I'll gather them close, let them know how you cared. <laughs> I love you more than my words can ever say. I'll keep you in my heart until my own dying day. And when that day comes, what joy on my lips, for I know I'll see you, tell you all that you missed. And you'll wrap me in arms and squeeze me so tight, set me down on your lap, and everything will be all right. My dad had a story he liked to tell um, about how you knew a uh, sermon was from the Holy Spirit. And uh, he would say in a Romanian church, you have a lot of times three different preachers. And when all three sermons correlate, you know the Holy Spirit was there. And I feel like <laughs> I feel like we've had a lot of messages today and there's a lot of similarities and overlap. And I feel like the Holy Spirit is really has a message for us. And uh, when I was a kid, my dad was an amazing man of God, and I could see that. And uh, I remember the story of Elijah and Elisha really spoke to me, because my dad may have not have been a prophet, but he was an amazing man of God. One sec. And uh, Elijah you know, said, what can I do for you, Elisha, when I go up? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And my dad has three sons, and he had a lot of sons in God in the, who he discipled. And I just pray that, just like with Elijah or Elisha, that that spirit will still be upon us, and God will give us a double portion that we can continue on his ministry throughout the world. And he loved us so much, and he poured out his life for the kingdom of God. And I just pray that we can continue that mission today and throughout the rest of our lives of those that knew him. If I think about my dad, honestly, the first thing that pops into my mind is Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God for salvation. To the Jews and to the Greeks. And it goes on. 
I found myself this past Father's Day preaching on Romans 1. And I get to this verse and I realized, <laughs> not that it would be the last Father's Day I preached that while he's alive, but just the power of that message. And some of you probably know this because you've heard the message, quite honestly. I've heard him preach the message, Mark 1, verse 1, Romans 1, 16, in every church in Kansas and every church in Illinois, over and over and over and over and one more time, over again. But I remember one time, we were in a church in Illinois and we went to my mind went blank, the little hamburger place, uh, whatever that's called. You're guaranteed to get sick if you go there. White Castle, thank you. Well, we went there, <laughs> and I was guaranteed to get sick, and so I did. I got sick. I threw up all night. It was awesome, wonderful. Um, I learned the value of Sprite, but I also remember after throwing up all night, my dad brought me to church because that's what you do. <laughs> And he preached the same message I've heard him preach over and over and over again. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he challenged people, you've got to understand how much we have to go. You have to understand how radical it's important to go to tell people to talk about this. And, and, and God didn't call me to the ministry there. That would have made a great story, but it wasn't there. But... He had an altar call and he called people forward and I came up and I don't know why I don't remember every time he preached, but here's what I have to say. He preached the same stinking message everywhere, but it had power when you were able to open your heart. Here's the thing. I didn't really want to throw up all day, but when I was able to open my heart, God moved in me like never before. So I can't stand up here and pretend to honor my dad without saying that. The reality of the matter is, God wants us to open our heart. He wants us to go. He wants to say, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. And I can tell you what, that holds me because I saw my dad. I saw the backside of missions. Most people see the glory, the wonder, the, the videos, the open doors. For every open door, there's 20 shut. For every happy person, there's 50 that hate you. And I saw my dad, and if I learned one thing from my dad, it was perseverance. I hated the stubbornness as a kid but I sure use it now. And the capacity for me as a preacher, some of you know, I am so grateful that he passed on not just the Holy Ghost top, which I have done, honestly, not just the excitement and that, but he passed on the value of not being ashamed when the doors are open and when the doors are closed. The value of saying no matter what, this is the mission. This is where I will go. And so I thank my father for that. And I challenge us all. Don't be ashamed. And I don't care how many times you've heard it. When you're ready to open, something changes. It's that simple. Jonathan, apparently the Holy Spirit is speaking because I have some similar things to say that Bobby and Jonathan just said. When I was thinking about what to share, and I, I thought, you know, I, I need to talk about a quality of my dad that I admired, and the quality that came up was perseverance. It was how once Rick Cunningham decided something was worth doing, there was nothing that was going to stand in the, his way. There was nothing. And I have a, a it, it wasn't just in ministry. This was everywhere where this was true. And so I have a story 
a, a very short anecdote to, ex to express how that's true even in life. I had been in India as a missionary myself for about six or seven months when my dad came to visit us. And he was there, and, and as happens in, in Bangalore at the time, and still to this day, power went out a few times during the day. And it interrupts your life, and you just learn to deal with it. It means you don't use your computer at that time. You don't, you don't have internet during that time. You find other ways to be productive. And, well, he, he got annoyed, but then nighttime came, and power was out for several hours. And he was really annoyed, and he said, that's never going to happen to you again. Now, if you've ever visited India, it works on its own timetable. We, we have, a, instead of India standard time, we call it India stretchable time. Because you can say, when, as a preacher, I learned to say that if we're going to start at 10 o'clock if I intend to start by noon. Because that's just how you work. And so that morning, he woke up and he said, we are getting you an external battery to run your house today. I said, Dad... I've only been in India six or seven months. That doesn't happen. It's not possible. I've had friends get them, and it takes weeks. He said, no, we're going to do it today. <laughs> to this day, I don't know how he pulled it off. <laughs> but that night, not only had we found and purchased one, but it was installed, and we had power to the rest of my time in India, in my house, because my dad came and visited me and decided we needed it. <laughs> that was my dad. Once Rick Cunningham decided to, that something was worth doing, you weren't going to stop him. Last week, when things took a turn for the worse, we decided that, well, the doctors had done everything they could. And my brothers and I, we all agreed we were going to come on Monday. And we did. We got here Monday to spend some time with him. Sang some beautiful songs in his room. Some beautiful time of prayer. As we left the hospital and went to the hospice center, the staff were in tears because of my dad and what in the love he saw. We got to the hospice center and you know what? There must have been one more life my dad One more life that needs to be reached. I stayed overnight with him Monday night. Tuesday morning, one of the staff members of the hospice center comes in, and she just starts talking to me. And Drew was talked to her afterwards. She had been going through a difficult time, and she was struggling. And she told me, opened up in the hospital room with my dad as I'm sitting there holding his hand, and said... You know, if only the world had more love. We need to see more love in this world. We need to see more unity. She was a Jamaican lady. She looked at her arms and she said, the color of our skin shouldn't matter. And I said, let me tell you about my family. I said, my, my grandparents, his parents, gave their lives to the, to the continent of Africa. They served. They loved your people, the, the people of your color skin. They didn't care. My dad, right here, sitting next to me, he gave his life to another land. He served for decades, his whole entire life in Europe, and the last majority of it in Romania. And he loved the people. It didn't matter the differences. And as I was talking about my dad, I saw his breathing getting shallow. I saw his lips going pale. And the thought occurred to me, this might be the moment he's passing. And I thought, should I stop talking to this lady and, or should I keep going? And I realized at that moment, there's no better conversation he could be hearing as he entered heaven than this one. And I said, his legacy's lived on. I served in India among people of color. I've given my life. My brother loves the Lord. We reach people. I told her, there are people in this world that don't care what you look like. Love is real, and it's God's love, and it's found by serving him. We finished talking, and I checked, and he had passed during that conversation. 
afterwards, as I said, Drew talked to her and she was in tears outside the center and she said, after she saw us all come together and sing around his bed and, and continue praying, she said, I, I've never seen this before. I needed to see this. My dad knew there was one more life that needed to be touched by him. The Holy Spirit's here because I have a challenge too, and it's similar to what Bobby said. I was texting one of my friends back in Orlando where I live. I don't hop like my dad. I pace. <laughs> I still move around, but instead of up and down, I'm side to side. <laughs> I was talking to my friend, and I was saying, you know, yes, there were tears at my dad's bedside. There, were, there was crying, but there was so much more joy. And I said, I don't know how people without this hope can get through this experience. I just don't know. It was, it was hard with the joy to accompany it and to overcome it, but without, I don't know how. And he wrote a text to me, something I never thought of before. And he said, you know, as, as Rebecca read today, sin brings death. And he said, I wonder if God mourns for those that are lost in sin as we mourn for those that we lose. Maybe that's why the analogy of sin and death is together, because it grieves God as much when one of his people leave him, when of his beloved creation don't follow him when they're lost. It grieves him as much as we grieve for those who pass away without knowing him. Maybe that Dear Jamaican lady, wasn't the last one he needed to reach. I'm not going to do an altar call or anything like that, but I, maybe you're here and you don't have that hope. Nothing would honor my dad more than for you to decide to follow him, to give your life to the Lord. There are plenty of people in this room who will talk to you if that's you. But I want to finish my, my discussion of my dad with that. There is hope. There is love. There is unity. And it's found in God. We're going to show another video, a few more testimonials. Please notice, we could be here beyond sundown if we opened the mic and said, uh, anybody else have anything to say about Rick? <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm going to give opportunity for two, just two more in a moment. And uh, everyone that doesn't get the chance, if you will go on to the Rick Cunningham Facebook page it will be so meaningful to Jan and the family to read your words later of what you might have said standing, but if you could just go on Rick Cunningham Facebook page and put your sentiments and stories there, that will be a long-lasting, uh, wonderful opportunity. But after this video, I'll step back and we'll have time. We have a roving mic and we'll have time for only two uh, brief testimonials from the congregation if someone wants to do that. Uh, and I'm honoring Jan's uh, uh, desire to make sure that we, we're just careful. They are so sensitive and want to be so kind. Um, but I'm the superintendent, so I don't have to be always kind. <laughs> I'm joking. I want to be kind. But what, what a beautiful outpouring of love already. Yes. Let's take a look at this video. True greatness is not measured by the headlines a person commands or the wealth he or she accumulates. The inner character of a person, the undergirding moral and spiritual values and commitments, is the true measure of lasting greatness. Billy Graham When we heard about uh, Rick going to heaven, um, it kind of hurt us. And we felt that, and we're feeling that even even now. Uh, 
Rick was a, a man of God and we saw that in, uh, in his life since he moved to Romania. We've been knowing him since 95 and uh, he was close to our family. And when I'm thinking about Rick, I'm thinking about three words. First word is love. He had love for God. And then another word, uh, passion. He was preaching with such passion the word of God and he was jumping up and down and proclaiming the, the gospel. And then another word that describes him a lot it's compassion, compassion for the lost. So now Rick is um, alive, rejoicing in the presence of God. And then I believe his reward is great. I'm excited to share with you about the excitement we've, we've saw with Rick last time he was with us in Lawrence and how that he was excited about uh, sending missionaries to other countries. Hi, Jen. Muchos besos to you from Josie, and just know that I'm praying for you. I just want to say how honored I am to be a part of this service. When Jimmy and I went to Romania, it was an incredible memory for us, and it stayed so close in our heart. And one of the things I remember about the ministry is how passionate you and Rick were about your, your mission field. We are Terry and Ruth Ann Hoggard, and we're delighted to call ourselves friends of Rick. Rick has been a big voice in my life from the very beginning over the last 40 years. Rick made a decision to live a poured out life. That means he planted seed, he planted churches, he poured out into national churches, he paved a new way for those behind him to have a new path and something more significant for a new generation. One amazing guy, one amazing missionary. We will miss him dearly, but we're grateful that one glorious day, we'll join him again in the presence of our great God. Jan, family, Ruthann and I are praying for you. This is Grady and Janet Smalling, and uh, we just want to say how much our hearts are touched with uh, the loss of our dear friend, Rick. Uh, Rick and Jan have been very close friends uh, since 1982 when we began our missionary career and together, and we wound up many years later in the country of Romania. We came there in 95, they came in 96, and I guess the, one of the highlights of our time with Rick was that he joined us uh, in the ministry with uh, two other young Romanian brothers forming the Peniel Youth Ministry, high school and university students. I guess in thinking back on that was Rick's fervency uh, in his preaching and in the altar services, uh, seeing so many young people filled with the Holy Spirit and eventually uh, called into the ministry. So highlights of Rick Cunningham for us in Romania was Peniel Youth Ministry and just fellowship in their home, uh, good times together, wonderful friends, and uh, our hearts go to Jan and to the boys in uh, we're rejoicing that Rick is uh, receiving his great reward. God bless you, Jan, and the family. Hey, friends. Hey, just want to take a moment and send our love to Jan Cunningham, to her family, to Robbie, to Bobby, and to Jonathan and all of their extended family. We are praying for you guys. And even as I stand here on the bridge at Summers Got World Missions with the flag of Romania, I'm so reminded of how many lives have been touched, how many Romanians have been reached for the gospel, trained and sent out to be missionaries from other countries because of Rick and Jan and because of your family. We send our love on behalf of the Europe Regional Family and of Sons of God World Missions. We're praying for you today. Pam and I were there at the very beginning when Rick and Jan said they were called to missions. In the 40 years of friendship, we have never seen anyone with more passion or vision than what Rick Cunningham had for the Romanian people. He loved to train and teach men and women about God's Word and never stopped talking about it. He had a heart to train them to become missionaries and enabled the Romanian church to send out missionaries to other parts of the world. There is no question about where his heart was 24-7. I've enjoyed every age I've been, and each has had its own individual merit. Every laugh line, every scar, is a badge I wear to show I've been present 
the inner rings of my personal tree trunk that I display proudly for all to see. Nowadays, I don't want a perfect face and body. I want to wear the life I've lived. Pat Benatar. Guys, God bless the family. And uh, I know he had a legacy and I know there is a lot of people who will uh, walk in his footsteps and uh, they will carry the, the message of the gospel. So thank you, thank you, Rick, for everything that you have done for our country, for Romania, and for us as a family. God bless you. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. Well done, my friend. Well done. What a ride. What a ride. Andy Parks is our world is our world missions director for Kansas, and he has a microphone and uh, is ready. At, are there two people in the audience that want to say something here before we move forward and move toward the conclusion of the service? If so, stand, and he will quickly move to you and allow you to have the microphone for just a moment. Anyone? All right. Well, then we will take that as a, as a no. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for being ready. Pastora, uh, that's going to read, please, por favor. Reading our text out of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 6 through 10, in Jan's second language, I think. Was it, did you learn Spanish first? Excellent. Jan's first language, she said, Spanish. <laughs> Because brother Rick spoke Spanish as well, mixed with Romanian. <laughs> este Esdras subió de Babilonia. El escriba diligente en la ley de Moisés que Jehová Dios de Israel había dado. Y le concedió al rey todo lo que pidió, porque la mano de Jehová su Dios estaba sobre Esdras. Y con él subieron a Jerusalén algunos de los hijos de Israel y de los sacerdotes, levitas, cantores, porteros y sirvientes del templo en el séptimo año del rey Artejerjes. Y llegó a Jerusalén en el mes quinto del año séptimo del rey, porque el día primero del primer mes fue el principio de la partida de Babilonia y al primero del mes quinto llegó a Jerusalén estando con él la buena mano de Dios, porque Esdras había preparado su corazón para inquirir la ley de Jehová y para cumplirla y para enseñar en Israel sus estatutos y decretos. I'd ask her to read out of Ezra chapter 7, because Rick reminds me of Ezra. Ezra was a traveling man. Ezra was an inspiring man. Ezra was a praying man. Ezra mentored and inspired others to do what they otherwise probably would not have done. Like Ezra, Rick was a man of whom people might say, that guy is worth following. That guy is worth following. Rick's life and the word of God urges us to all live lives worthy of following. Jonathan, Bobby, Richie, here's the fourth challenge. Will we pay attention to the example and accept the challenge whatever we have been, whoever we have been, today can be the beginning of fulfilling 
all of the vision that Jesus has for our lives. Your age is irrelevant, young or old. Your health is irrelevant. You can choose today to touch one more life. I want to offer to you out of verse 1 that we did not read, and I didn't ask the pastor to read the first few verses because there are 16 statements of this guy was the son of, the son of, the son of, and it would feel like we were reading a phone book. And so, um, and for those of you that are younger than, than about 15, how do I explain a phone book? Um, so we'll move on. Verse one said, many years later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, there was a man named Ezra. He was a man of his times and we are worth following Rick was worth following if we live involved in the activities of the earth, but we don't live about the activities of the earth. Ezra's life is earmarked with a political socioeconomic context. Rick's life was connected to the realities of this world. He was worth following because he was involved in this world, but he was not about this world. Number two, He was, it says of Ezra, he was the son of, and then there are 16 names given, the son of, the son of, the son of, finally going back in the genealogy to Aaron, the first high priest of Israel, Moses' baby brother. We are worth following if we value family legacy. We've heard about grandparents on both sides, powerful missionaries, dedicated their lives to bringing the gospel to the ends of the earth. And this family, what a beautiful thing to see these three strapping men step up and with tenderness and joy talk about their dad and carrying on following Jesus. Jan, you and Rick and the Holy Spirit did a great job raising these these men into who they are today. Value family legacy. If you value your family legacy, you're worth following. Verse number six, this Ezra was a scribe who was well-versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given to the people of Israel. We are worth following if we love and live the word of God. If you aren't loving and living the word of God, people may follow you anyway, but you're going to lead them or I'm going to lead them to a place that's dark. But if we, like Rick, will follow the word of God and love the word of God, we can lead people to a place that is worth landing in. Can you say amen? It says of Ezra, he came up to Jerusalem from Babylon and the king gave him, the king gave him, oh, I don't have time to unpack that, but the king gave him everything he asked for because the gracious hand of the Lord, his God was on him. Verse nine repeats it. The next chapter or two says it another couple of times. The gracious hand of the Lord was on him. We are worth following if we allow the hand of God to be the center of our life. In the uh, era of Galileo, the Catholic church uh, almost excommunicated him because he said that uh, it was the son not the earth that was the center of the solar system. Mathematically, he could prove it, but there was bad theology and they said, no, the earth is the center. The earth doesn't have enough gravitational uh, oomph to hang everything and keep everything moving in proper orbit. Only the sun had that gravitational capacity. If you and I don't live with the word of God at the center, if Jesus at the center, then we, everything will not be in alignment. It'll go shooting off here and there. But if we put Jesus at the center, like Rick did, we are worthy. We are worth following if we keep Jesus at the gravitational center and the Lord's hand will be on us. Verse eight says, Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in August of that year. He had arranged to leave Babylon on April 8th, the first day of the new year. And he arrived at Jerusalem on August 4th. You say, why would God inspire the writer to tell such such details of dates? Here's what Rick knew. Here's what Ezra knew. 
we are worth following if we recognize spirit leading and strategic planning work together. If there was anyone led of the spirit that I know, it was Rick Cunningham. But if there was anyone who thought strategically, it was Rick Cunningham. And so Ezra was that kind of guy. God wants us as leaders, as individuals, men and women, to be worth following. Let's follow the leading of the Spirit, but let's think through what we're doing and where we're trying to land. Verse 7, some of the people of Israel as well as some of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants traveled up to Jerusalem with Ezra in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes' reign. We are worth following if we want to bring others along to God's promise. These people followed Ezra, and how many testimonies have we seen of these people who followed Rick as he followed Jesus? People follow contagious vision, and Rick certainly had a contagious vision. We are worth following if we make wise choices. The last thought is this. Ezra had determined, verse 10, had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. I did know that Rick was a little bit opinionated, not much, but a little bit opinionated at times. He's like most of us, we all have opinions, but Rick dedicated his life not to teaching his opinions, but like Ezra, to teach those decrees those regulations that came from the heart of the living God. And you and I are worth following when we determine to live by such a wise choice as to base our life on the word of the living God. And so in conclusion, before we sing and have a closing prayer, let me say this and the echo of of Richie's challenge. If you aren't following Jesus, we won't have an altar call where you'll come forward. But if you aren't following Jesus, maybe you're you're just here because you you, you think the Cunningham's a great family. Well, you think right. You just wanted to honor them. You've done right by coming to honor them. But if you're not following Jesus, and I'm not talking about a historic construct just a theological dry idea. I'm talking about the Jesus who died on a cross in place of human beings, the sinless son of God, the only one who didn't deserve the cross, but the only one who could die there for all of our sins. And then he rose from the dead. If you're not following that living, breathing, coming again, Jesus, today, open your heart. Bobby said it well, open your heart things will come alive. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes and follow Jesus and you will become someone worth following. Wayne, come and lead us. Oh, for a thousand tongues. You have it in your program. Look on the back page. This was Rick's one request for his funeral that we sing this with the gusto that he would sing it. So join with me and let's sing all six verses because he never liked to skip a verse.
Înainte ca să mulțumim Domnului pentru slujba aceasta de înmormântare a fratelui Ric, aș vrea să citesc o scrisoare frumoasă care am primit-o de la fratele Simit în Buc, dorul bisericii Bethesda din Michigan. I'd like to read a letter that was written by brother Simit in Buc from the uh, church Bethesda in Michigan. Biserica aceasta a sponsorizat foarte mult lucrarea fratelui Rick în România. This church sponsored a lot of uh, the work that Rick did in Romania. Ia sună felul următor. Iubită și îndoliată familie Cunningham. Beloved in mourning fam- Cunningham family. Dragă sora Jan. Dear Jan. Suntem și noi triști și îndurerați de plecarea dintre noi a fratelui Rick. We are also saddened and afflicted by Rick's departure from us. El a fost un om al lui Dumnezeu pentru generația noastră cu impact deosebit he, pentru biserica pentecostală din România, diaspora română, din Europa și SUA. He was a man of God for our generation with a special impact for the Pentecostal Church in Romania and the Romanian diaspora throughout Europe and the USA. Biserica Bethesda Troi, Missouri, s-a bucurat mult de slujirea sa, fiind o sursă de inspirație pentru noi în lucrarea de misiune transculturală și educație. The Bethesda Church in Troy, Michigan enjoyed his ministry a lot, being a source of inspiration for us in the work of transcultural mission and education. Nu vom uita nici nu vom uita dedicarea, dragostea, dăruirea și devotamentul său pentru Domnul, pentru frați și în mod special pentru oamenii nemântuiți. We will not forget his dedication, love, giving and devotion to the Lord, to his brothers and those who are not saved. Cu durere și speranță ne rugăm ca Tatăl Ceresc să vă mângâie. With pain and hope we pray that the heavenly Father will comfort you. Să vă dea putere să treceți biruitor peste, acest, peste această grea încercare prin ajutorul Duhului Sfânt mângâitorul and give you strength to overcome this difficult trial with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. El să vă umple inimile îndoliate de speranța revederii la arătarea în gloria Domnului nostru Iisus Hristos. May He fill your mournful hearts with the hope of seeing our Lord Jesus Christ in His glory. În numele familiei a Bisericii Troi Michigan și a comunității române din metropola Detroit vă transmitem Sincele condolianțe, cu dragoste aleasă pastorul Simit în Buc. On behalf of the family, the Bethesda Church in Troy, Michigan, and the remaining community in the metro Detroit area, we send you our sincere condolences and we greet you with love. Amen. Amen. Aș vrea să-l invit pe Gabi Purcar, care va mulțumi Domnului pentru slujba din această zi. Amen. I would like to invite Brother Gabi Purcar to say the ending prayer to close today's service. If I may add another verse that I heard the brother and Pastor Rick saying while he was on the hospital bed. I visited him with one of the deacons from Ebenezer Church and uh, he said that verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. And uh, he quoted the last part of the but I'm going to read the, the entire verse. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about. For I'm under compulsion. For woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. I was looking at him, you know, he was, you know, in that state of, you know, sickness. And like, Brother Rick, you know, just hope, you know, for the best. If God is still have work for you and with you, he's going to bring you over. So I just want to encourage, you know, to, to keep up the good work. That's what was, that was one of his passion one of his desire, you know. Even on the, on the bed of, of the hospital, he said, what to me if I don't preach the gospel? So let's complete the race. Let's preach the gospel. Let's do this, you know, with uh, uh, devotion for the one that saved us, which is Jesus Christ. Let's do our duty as child and as the disciple of Jesus Christ. Preach the gospel, led by the Holy Spirit to the power of the Holy Spirit, amen? Let's all bow our heads and let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everything you've done in our lives, for everything that you've done through Brother Rick, 
I pray that you'll strengthen the family, Sister Jan, Richie and his family, Bobby and his family, Jonathan and his family, and the rest of the Cunningham family, Lord. I pray that through the Holy Spirit, you will give them power to fulfill the race. As we look forward, Lord, for the, for the coming of, your, in the, of you in the majesty, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us, will strengthen us, and whatever we do here on earth will represent you and the cause of the kingdom so we can go and preach the gospel and fulfill whatever you have started in our life through your sacred sacrifice, your blood, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. This concludes our service. The funeral home directors will come and be dismissing you by row. There will not be a further viewing. And so uh, we will not drive by procession to the fun uh, to the uh, graveside, Richwood Cemetery in Nixa, but in about 45 minutes or so, uh, and Google Maps is our friend, so you can obviously Google the Richwood Cemetery in Nixa, and uh, we will have a concluding graveside service for all those who want to come and attend the graveside service. Wayne. The pastor of the church here uh, let us know that it is the Romanian tradition to not send cards to families, but they give an offering during the time of the funeral. So no one is obligated, but there is going to be a basket for anyone who would like to donate. The money is going to go to the missions account so that Jan can continue to touch Romanian young people with the gospel of Christ. She produces a weekly television program that is aired on national television in Romania, training, reaching, evangelizing, and discipling Romanian young people with the gospel. And I believe that is worthy of our support. And so those of you who would like to give to the, so that Jan can continue to minister in Romania, there will be a, a, an offering receptacle uh, I'm not sure where it is, but uh, it's in the back. It's in the back as you go out. So the Lord bless you. Amen.